What's up everybody, I'm Matt Brody and this is Simply Must Go. And today I've got kind of a bonus episode. I just got back from Jeep Invasion and Pigeon Forge and I had a chance to talk to two companies that have partnered together to create what I think might be just the best American made lights you've ever seen. So this light system is a partnership between Tyree and off-road concepts and it's called the apex system and that's specifically for the jk there's another system that's designed specifically for the jl obviously i've got the jk system and what it entails is the mounting bracket the light and then also the wiring harness and all of those have been so over engineered that there's not another lighting company in the United States that even stands close to the quality that's coming out of this system. But instead of hearing me ramble on about how great these lights are, I'm gonna share with you the full interview I did with Tyree and ORC at Jeep Invasion. And then Jackson from ORC is gonna show us exactly how these are installed and how easy it is to do. And then we're gonna do some comparisons and show you just how bright these lights really are. Hi, I'm Cole with Tyree. Uh, just here to tell you a little bit about our product and everything. We're pretty new to the off-road game, but we've been in business for 30 plus years, uh, supplying the heavy machinery, mining, logging, uh, farming, all that stuff. We are the titans in the OE heavy machinery world. And we're just getting in the off-road world now. Uh, what makes our product a little different is the evolution, really. We come from, like I said, a heavy machinery type of atmosphere. So all of our stuff has to work. It has to work to the utmost standards and it has to be tested pretty hardcore. So the stuff we build is all built with, you know, heavy aluminum cast uh, housings. We uh, pressure wash rate them. We uh, get down to salt spray. We even get down to the electrical noise because when you're in mines and stuff like that, you have to be able to communicate. So we make sure these high powered lights don't give off any electrical noise. Um, also with that, we have really engineered lenses. Our lenses may look like they're just like a random lens to the, to the layperson, but we have a lot of engineering and a lot of time just in the lens patterns with our lights, which also gives us the opportunity to offer you guys multiple lens patterns. We go by the nomenclature symmetric, wide symmetric, narrow symmetric, which is our answer to the flood spot thing. People are always asking, is it a flood, is it a flood or a spot? Well, it's kind of both. Wide and narrow refers to how much flood you get, but all of our lights go about three, four miles out in space and you can see them for days. So that's what we pride ourselves on. Um, something else that makes us a little different too, is we don't we don't beat around the bush about our output and everything like that. A lot of companies will tell you, uh, this 100,000 uh, lumen number, we tell you what's actually coming out of our housings, the actual working light that you can actually use. And if you can get anybody else to tell you their lumen numbers, you'll find we're very, very high. Um, you might recognize some of our lights because we do private label for Jeep and Mopar. They gave us the opportunity to get into the off-road world. So our 1313s and our 1010s, um, you might see on some Jeeps. As well, the AEV 7000 series is actually a Tyree product that uh, AEV adds a little more bling to and makes it their own. So we're out there in the off-road space, it's just getting our own name out there. The name is pronounced Tyree. I know it's a little confusing, but it's Tyree and that's how we pronounce it. Um, Hopefully you see more of us in the next coming years. We're going to be on more and more sweet builds like Matt's and uh, more cool builds. Hopefully get on his channel a little bit more and uh, we'll see you guys out there. If you guys are looking to find Tyree, uh, our Instagram is at Tyree underscore lights. And you can find our products at Tyree.com, uh, search in the off-road sector. And as well, we have a website called Fox Taillights where we sell over our website. Or, oh, I just that up. That's right, start That's over. Yeah. If you guys are looking for Tyree, you can find us on Instagram at, at Tyree underscore lights. Uh, our website is Tyree.com. And we also sell lights through FoxTaillights.com. So check us out, give us a poke around, and ask for Cole if you're at the uh, Smoky Mountain Jeep Show. Hey everybody, my name is Jackson Green. I'm the president of Off-Road Concepts and uh, today I'm going to give you a quick overview of one of our products and the quality that it has and the difference in manufacturing that, uh, that we bring to the market. So this is our Apex Pro system. Now we are partnered with Tyree Lighting for the lights. They are the highest quality, highest output light made for the off-road world. They are made 100% in the United States in Wisconsin. Now this happens to have the amber lenses, but they also have clear lenses available in a variety of different lights. Now our JL Pro system, which is what this is, uses the four inch light. These two lights put out a verified 8,600 lumens, which is more than any other pod system on the market and more than some light bars. Now our brackets, which you can see here, start out as a solid block of billet aerospace 6061 t6 aluminum they're then actually machined on a five axis cnc machine down to this beautiful shape 
and uh, we try to bring in a lot of the OEM design features of the brackets that Jeep already has on it and bring those into our bracket and after the machining process is done, they are then bead blasted and finished in a type two hard coat black anodizing. Now, the reason that this process is superior to any other method of finishing on the market right now is because powder coat or paint, anything like that, given enough time, will chip, it will fade, and especially steel brackets, you know, compared to aluminum, will rust. These brackets, because they're aluminum and they're anodized, will look like this for the life of the vehicle. Uh, these brackets have actually been on here for almost two years and they look exactly as the day that they were put on, even down to the hardware. We actually use anodized aluminum hardware into the body as well. Now that's important because the Jeep substructure, especially on the JL, is a lot of aluminum. So a lot of companies will use steel bolts. Now that's a big issue because when you have steel bolts, especially untreated steel bolts, going into an aluminum substructure, you get um, differential metal uh, premature rusting, uh, which weakens just about everything. So anodized machine bracket, anodized bolts, and then up top, these lights also have a vibration isolator that sort of makes makes life on the light a little bit easier especially when you're going over really rough terrain if you're doing high speed Baja stuff and uh, both our brackets and the light and everything else involved has a lifetime warranty if anything on this fades chips breaks or goes bad it will be replaced the next thing I want to go ahead and talk about is our wire harnesses now this is very different this is what you're gonna get in a box from us when you order a light system 99% of the companies on market right now Number one, they manufacture in China. And number two, what you're gonna get is a very cheaply made um, harness that's not sealed and made overseas in China. And number one, that just doesn't belong on an American vehicle. And number two, you see a lot of failures in light systems, especially around the harness, because water gets in, dirt gets in, and the system just fails. So this is all made to OE specifications. We use genuine Deutsch connectors a completely water sealed submersible marine grade fuse so that no water can get in. The other really nice thing that you're going to get with us is you're going to get our switch. Now most other companies send a plastic style very cheaply made switch, rocker switch, that you usually have to drill a hole in your dashboard to install. With this guy right here, it's in a 3D printed base, it's got a genuine carbon fiber housing and then the switch itself is a beautiful stainless steel switch, it has a really nice touch to it and instead of drilling a hole, we simply supply the switch with some VHB by 3M on the back. What you're gonna do is just stick this anywhere you feel like on your A-pillar. The wire tucks nicely behind the A-pillar. You don't see any wires hanging out. And uh, it also works as a, uh, as, a, as a staged product. So if you want one system from us, you get one switch, two, two, and so on. And you can actually have an entire bank running down the A-pillar and they can all be for different systems and we sell these a la carte as well. Lastly, this harness runs almost entirely inside the firewall of the vehicle. Now, that's pretty big because it protects the system inherently from any water or vibration or high heat that it might experience in the engine bay, which allows us to keep the cost down on this you know, for the end user, which is great. Now, the way that the system installs is it simply runs through the gasket in the A-pillar and up to the light and down to the battery inside of the engine bay. Now that's important because most other companies ask you to punch out a hole in the firewall either through foam or by drilling through a rubber grommet. And that's just all around a bad idea because what you're doing there, especially for an off-road vehicle, is you're introducing a perfect spot for water, dirt, moisture, and even engine heat to enter the cabin. And that very rapidly can degrade uh, inside the firewall and especially if you live in a wet area or you do a lot of mudding or water fording, that's just a great spot for water to leak into the cabin and start rotting uh, your carpet and all sorts of nasty stuff. So that's another great feature of our harnesses and how they actually install on the vehicle. Now, if these products interest you and uh, you really want to get your hand on a set of these, you can go to offroadconcepts.com, very easy, offroadconcepts, all one word, .com, and uh, we have a variety of different products that you can choose from, from entry-level systems all the way up for both the JK and the JL, these pro systems, um, and we have a range of price points for everyone, whatever you're looking to spend, but just know that every single thing that we manufacture from the harnesses to the brackets, the hardware, and the lights are all made right here in the United States as they should be, and they have all come with a lifetime warranty.
I am so excited. I am here with Jackson Green who owns ORC and we are going to be mounting some new lights to the Southlander that I've been really looking forward to for well, since Jeep Beach. Since Jeep Beach, I've been looking forward to getting these lights and we made it work. But Jackson is going to walk us through exactly how easy it is to install these lights and why these lights are the best lights on the market. Hey Matt, thanks, appreciate it. We're up here in these beautiful mountains up here at Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion in uh, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And uh, we're going to be installing our Apex Pro system, which is our top of the line lighting system on this Jeep JK. What we're going to be doing here is we're actually going to be installing these lights in a driveway and we really want to show you guys just how easy it is to get this kit installed. So unlike other kits, everything that you're going to need to install this can fit on a bumper of a Jeep. So just a simple either impact or a regular old wrench. Um, we're going to need a 10 millimeter open-ended, a 13 millimeter open-ended, a uh, just two Torxes, a T40 and a T27. Really simple here, just a six millimeter Allen key, a screwdriver, and some wire cuts and a 13 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter socket. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do as with any light installed just for safety of the vehicle is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna disconnect the negative battery terminal just to make sure everything's powered down and we can't short the system or hurt ourselves or the vehicle. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take your larger T40 Torx bit and we're gonna go ahead and remove all of these bolts holding the A-pillar cover off. Now we're just going to do the same to the other side really quickly. We're not removing the cowl, we're just loosening it so we can fit our wire under afterwards. You're just going to push down on the back and in the front you're just going to get your fingers kind of in between the lip and pop it out like so. And then you're going to start at the bottom. You're going to pull the bottom out first and then you're going to slide it out from the top. And you're going to repeat this, like I said, on the driver's side. Underneath the dashboard um, where the HVAC blower is, there is a Phillips screw holding, one of the Phillips screws holding the base of the HVAC motor in. And you're simply going to take that screw out and you're going to screw this to the base of it where the rest of the factory wire harness is. And like I said, we have an in-depth installation video. It just requires a Phillips head uh, PH2. So this is the uh, Phillips that's right here on the HVAC motor comes out really easy and uh, this is where you're gonna relocate your relay facing this way. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do guys is using a 10 millimeter, we're going to remove the nut on the factory grounding stud on both the driver and the passenger side on the footwell. So we're gonna go ahead and slide our grounding ring terminal on top of the factory grounding ring terminal and then of course reinstall the 10 millimeter nut and as I stated before, we use in our systems all of our grounding points to all of the factory grounding locations. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take the driver's side of the harness and we're gonna pass it over the center console into the footwell of the driver's side of the vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and remove the driver's side rear grounding stud. And we're gonna take the driver's side grounding terminal and we're gonna slide it just as before over the factory ring terminal. When you install these, make sure to angle the harness upwards so that it's not angled down and visible. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take the both the power lead and the plug for the light, and you're gonna push them up in between the body of the Jeep and the plastic on the dash and get them up there in that gap. Now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take these leads and we're gonna pass them through the A-pillar seal. Now, all other companies usually have you pass the leads through this hole here in the dashboard. Now that's not a good idea because when you do that, you're removing insulation from your dashboard and you're actually allowing a passage now for water to, and moisture to get in from the engine compartment and heat directly into your cabin, which is not optimal. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be pulling this seal backwards and we're gonna be sliding these harness leads in between the seal and the A-pillar. Now what's really important here is you don't wanna leave them like this where you're pushing the seal out because obviously that's gonna cause issues. What you need to do, and there is plenty of room in here, is work them all the way back and there is a channel there for them to sit in and you wanna make sure that that gasket is not being pushed outwards. You're gonna to continue to work the leads down and around this gap and we're gonna pick up on the other side. Because our harness comes out here, what you're gonna to wanna to do 
is push some of this lead back through that gasket and leave just about that much coming out of the base. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna continue to work this through the seal up into the A-pillar, as I said before, past the seal so that you're not having any issues interfering with that door jam closing all the way up in there. So we're gonna to continue to work this up inside that gap. As I mentioned before, we're gonna just lift this panel up and we're gonna slide the power terminal in through that gap. And you wanna make sure it's not resting on the panel, but that it's behind it and has dropped down so you don't squish it and that you know, you're not gonna drill through it. It's not beneath these holes. So here I can see this needs to be pushed in just a little bit more. There we go. Now it's dropped down and we can see that it's sitting flush. Now we're going to take this lead and we're going to pass it into the engine bay as so and get it ready to be connected to the positive battery terminal. All right, so some of you might notice a little bit different about our harness is our fuse. Now, this is a really interesting fuse. All other harnesses on the market for lights for Jeeps use standard open fuses. Now that's a really bad idea and the number one problem you're gonna see in existing harnesses that are on the market are shorted out lights because of bad fuses. The reason for that is because the standard fuses that are used aren't sealed. The rest of the harness might be sealed, but if you have a bad fuse where water can get in, you're gonna get premature failure. Now, this is a marine grade, completely sealed fuse, and it uses a extremely heavy duty glass type fuse. You can pick up at any auto store. For some reason it goes bad or you need to replace it. And you can see on both sides to the harness, as well as internally, it has a double lipped seal. So this seal can actually be submerged. Like I said, it's a marine grade fuse underwater. If you do a lot of mudding or water fording, like the rest of the connectors on the vehicle, and you're never going to see a fuse failure. All right, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and zip tie our harness to the factory harness just before and after the fuse. All right, so one of the things you're gonna notice about our harness is unlike a lot of other systems on the market, that the fuse kind of ends up in some random place buried somewhere where you gotta, you know, tuck it in. Ours is designed to be right there. So in the case that you do actually break the system um, due to some kind of vehicle malfunction or the worst case, you know, scenario happens and you need to see where you're going while you're off-roading, We've all been there. You're either stuck on a rock ledge or you're buried waist deep in mud. And the last thing you want to be doing is digging in your engine bay, trying to figure out how to fix the thing. And on ours, it's right there and you pop it right open, stick a new fuse in, plug it in and you're good to go again. All right, so the next thing here we're going to do here is we're going to open our switch package. We just package it nicely like this so that, you know, when you're installing the harness, you don't accidentally bang it up. So we're going to take out our carbon fiber switch. And what you're going to do is you're going to put the switch up between this gap here, you're gonna put your top other hand and you're gonna push down the little rubber gasket the Jeep has between the uh, windshield and the dashboard. And you're just gonna feel around, it's quite easy. You're gonna feel your other fingers with the switch and then you're just gonna push and you're gonna go ahead and squeeze that switch between the dashboard and the windshield and you're just gonna pull it up and through like so. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is um, you're gonna go ahead and wipe down this interior A-pillar, the plastic, with a simple cloth with just some IPA, some rubbing alcohol on it. Now, the reason that we do this is because if you get your Jeep detailed or you detail it yourself and you have some armor all or interior detailer on it and that plastic has you know, fingerprints or dust or dirt or any kind of detailing spray, it can affect the way that the plastic adheres. So like I said, just spray some IPA on a rag and just give it a good rub down just to make sure you don't have any kind of residue on there when you go ahead and place the switch. And just like that should be good. Go, go ahead and let that dry and uh, then we're gonna proceed with installing the switch. Alrighty guys, so the next step you're gonna do in your install bag, you're gonna get this 3M primer stick and this just helps the 3M tape adhere to this particular kind of plastic. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna see a dot on the stick. You're gonna crush that dot. You're gonna hear a crunching sound. You're gonna shake it up a little bit. Wait till the end gets filled with fluid. And then you're just gonna take it in your switch location right here where you can choose for wherever you want it. And you're gonna go ahead and just rub this on just like you would a felt pen coloring in like a Sharpie. 
And like I said, this just helps the plastic adhere to the 3M adhesive that we use. And this is a non-permanent install. Of course, you can remove it and reapply it, but especially if you live in a hot climate, this just prevents the switch from coming loose. All right, you guys, the next thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna peel this red backing off of the 3M on the switch. You're gonna hover it right over that spot where you put the uh, primer. You're gonna go ahead and stick it on there and just press real nice and good and make sure you get a good adhesion. And uh, after about five minutes, that should cure and your switch is gonna be installed. Yeah, so normally we use a body tool for this, um, but uh, you can just use your fingers if you don't have a body tool or a plastic knife. And I uh, just wanna tuck it back there so that you know it's not visible and you can't see any wires hanging out behind the dash. All right, so next thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna take this slack and uh, you're gonna use one of our supplied zip ties just to bundle this up. Like I said, we do offer, you know, because of the switch design, you can place the switch all the way up high or all the way down at the bottom if you're running a series of switches of ours. So we offer a little bit of slack and you're just gonna go ahead and coil that up, put a zip tie on it, and then tuck it behind this panel. Now, normally with other harnesses, you might hear some noise with this, but because we design our harnesses to OE specification, we use OE felt tape. Now, what that does is because it's soft and has a felt texture, it's used in OE harnesses so that when the vehicle's moving around off-roading, going over bumps, and you know it's knocking around in there, you're not gonna hear any noise against the plastic like you would with you know a cheaper plastic loomed harness. All right, so the last step you're gonna do is repower the vehicle system. You're gonna install the negative battery terminal and tighten it up. And the wire harness portion of the install is complete. We're just gonna repeat the inverse of the process that we did before. We're gonna slide the top in first, notch it in, and then just pop it in like so, and clip it back in. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put these A-pillar covers back on. Just wanna make sure you go top to bottom, top to bottom, not just like cork one side. You have to tighten these a lot because they have that crush gasket to decrease the vibration into the light. These lights are insane. Check this out. So this is just my regular front headlights on the Jeep. This is the high beams. So low beams, high beams, and then these are the new lights. I mean, it's unreal how much different they are. That's, that's insane. That is so much light. It is so bright. All right guys, I hope you found this video both helpful and informative. I really just wanted to share with you why I thought this Apex system was by far, hands down, the best American made off-road light system on the market today. And if you're interested in these lights, I will leave links to everything down below so you can go check those out. But until next time guys, I hope I see you on the trails. God bless 
and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.